we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing? You know, I, we have two. We have two separate intros for the show. We have the we have the Gus Johnson inspired intro, um, which it just did, and then we have the classic one, which is anchors up, sails at full, because it's it's a it's a boat, it's a boat thing, and the sloop's a boat. It's 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 a pun. Um, and then for whatever reason, when I was gearing up for that one, I'm like, gonna do the anchor gonna do the anchor and then just for whatever reason the other one came out of my mouth no one cares about this except for me oh the our our sloop cats care about it jared i know they do oh yeah the the inner workings of my mind and which uh which starting tagline i start with is of course of the highest interest to everybody listening including the dedicated folk over at Buckeye Huddle who make sure to dislike my videos instead of just, you know, not watching them. Well, let's get into why people are listening to us, and that is knowing your enemy, the Purdue Boilermakers. But before we get to know thy enemy, uh, let's talk about Ryan Day. Yeah, let's talk about Ryan Day and his oppressor uh, this afternoon as we are recording this that we will be posting a couple of days later. So uh, <laughs> always it, always fun. Podcast delay. Fun podcast delay. Uh, probably a big topic here. Mecca, the Buka, status of him. Where, where is he at here since his injury? Uh, Ryan Day pretty much says it's not a long-term issue. Not going to worry about it. To me, I read that t- I read that tea leaves as um, probably not going to see him in this game here. Going to no. going to keep him healthy for the following week against Spo- uh, Penn State. Spoiler spoiler alert! Uh, Purdue's not very good. Now, does that mean you should walk into this game without any worries? No, you should not. But also, no, Purdue's not very good. Definitely shouldn't, and I'll give you a good reason why shortly in a little bit here uh trey henderson trey hondo as we like to call him here in our uh, discord which by the way discord.thesloopcast.com always be plugging uh he i got it that time uh he's full go full go ready to go for the purdue game here so expect a lot of number 32 this weekend and speaking of running back yeah and exp and speaking of running backs uh Dallin Hayden. Dallin Hayden had um, had a really good game last year and reserved for a very depleted running back room last year. And a lot of people were like, Where, where's, where's Dallin Hayden? Where's, where's Dallin? Where's Dallin Hayden at here? We're, we haven't seen him at all. Well, Ryan Day kind of kind of already spilled the beans and that when well, I spilled beans, but he pretty much said that he, they're, they're trying to red shirt redshirt him this year save him for yep. next year uh but but said if if need be need to be called upon he's he's ready to go there i mean you get four games but you know you might need those four games down the stretch in which case mm-hmm. you can have your cake yep. and eat it too of having a really good backup running back who can also redshirt you know so just just save it because this running i mean you're probably losing henderson at the end yep. of the year um, I believe Trainum's out of eligibility. Um, yep. You lose those two, I, I think, without question. And then I, it's totally plausible that a third running back leaves. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the two running backs that remain should have plenty of carries available to them. Yep. All right. Uh, some inter- other things that I wanted to just make note here. There's a lot of other topics here. Just some some things here that I think a lot of Buckeye fans are really curious about here, and that's running the ball here. Uh, Ryan Day says that he feels Ohio State still needs to run the ball and can't and can't rely on the passing game. Now, if you listen to us on the Scarlet and Grade episode of the Maryland game this past Monday. We were under the uh, 
we pretty much said that they should just focus on the passing game, <laughs> do um, do what they sh um, are doing well in, and that's passing. And maybe they need to do pass more to set up the run game here. But Rande sure. seems to Rande seems to be thinking the opposite here. He's still going to try to force the run here, trying to trying to get it to work here. Um, by the way, against that, against Purdue, he should. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the offensive line, uh, says that they've been working on various lapses and hand placements and techniques. Hmm. Uh, go, it goes on to say, I always say execution feels emotion. And I don't and I don't think they're not playing hard. So that tells me that poor coaching or execution. Hmm. On the, I mean, uh, well, I mean. And, and 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 yeah, some of it's talent. Yeah, yes, but but you see you see a lot of these other teams who have less talent on the offensive line that's doing well, right? And you you would think that Ohio State should be able to do more with the talent that they have on the offensive line. Those offensive lines who you see who are less talented as far as especially if you want to talk about recruiting stars but are very productive are in places like iowa or wisconsin um where a lot of their offensive linemen uh are like fifth year or fourth year guys the problem is at ohio state is when you get a paris johnson jr he only stays for three years so you get these splashes of talent on the offensive line. But you aren't getting, you know, fifth and, you know, with the COVID year still being a thing, sixth year players along that offensive line. I mean, there's there is one, but that, you know, there's one. Meanwhile, you're starting a freshman, a left tackle who's never played left tackle before a right tackle who is in his first year playing. Uh, you, you do have experience at the guards, but you have a freshman center. So it's kind of worth of both wor worst of both worlds. There is an eighth year offensive lineman in the big 12 this year. Dude's got his doctorate. Yeah. I mean, there has to uh, be. So, so I mean, the I mean, the, 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 Sad news is, is there has to be some injuries. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's some medical red shirts in there. So the last thing here, I thought this was really interesting topic. And then we're going to, we'll finally get into Purdue here, talking about Purdue. Uh, so we had somebody asking about Ryan Day's thought on officiating. And of course, Ryan Day can't yeah, talk about the officiating, yeah, yeah. but but he does, he does say, it's hard for me to say much. It, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I can tell you this, it's my job to advocate for the players and compete. I'm going to go as hard as I can to defend our players to ensure they have the best opportunity they can to be successful. So pretty much that, that he amazing political answer that that is that is Trestle esque right there. That is Trestle esque. That's. I wonder, I wonder if he had Trestle write that up for him. It says if you have ever been asked this type of question, you should say this. Word from word. Austin says the doctor lies. The doctor with the lawyer lies. Speaks. <laughs> the doctor lies with the lawyer speaks. Ooh, damn, that's a good line. Um, All right, Jared. But by the way, if you're if you uh, on the offensive line, various lapses and hand placement and technique. My goodness, where have we heard this already? Except right here on the Sleepcast been telling y'all that the hand tech has been terrible i've been saying it for a month speaking, now speaking of terrible know and your I've enemy purdue purdue boilermakers purdue comes into this game two and four i missed a number there it is two and four one and two in the one and two in the big 10 here jared now Ask Sloopcast what's look a Boilermaker. Uh, the steam engine. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. <laughs> Spe specifically the steam engine. Yeah. Or 
it's a it's a it's an alcoholic drink in which you drop a shot inside of a beer. Uh, that's also a boiler maker. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah. All right. So, a couple of, a couple of things when you talk about Purdue, you talk about on the road in the Big Ten West, but it's not a night game, Jared. It is not a night game, so it doesn't apply to one of our rules of don't play on the road in the Big Ten West at night. So interesting, interesting thing here. I got to find where I posted this at here, but there was a stat here about Ohio State coaches. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The last, the last, the last four Ohio State head coaches from this century. So, Cooper, yes, Cooper did coach this century. Uh, Trestle, uh, technically he didn't. Cooper, Trestle, Fickle. The and century Meyer. doesn't actually start until two thousand and one. Since two thousand, all four head coaches prior to Coach Ryan Day have all lost to Purdue at least once. Yeah. Um, that, 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 that stat feels a bit like a novelty. So let me do this one, which I think sounds worse. I think this sounds worse. All right. Ohio state is two and four in their last six visits to Purdue. That one, that one hurts more. Ohio, I'm going to say it again. In their last six visits to West Lafayette, Ohio State is two and four. That's a, that's a scary stat. So that is a so viciously scary stat. All right, so let's let's look at this team that's looking to improve their home record against Ohio State here. So Purdue, yeah, so Purdue overall, you know, you know, we we said that we this we said this a couple of times already with Purdue in past episodes, and I feel I feel like we're gonna I'm, we're gonna say it again. This is not a good Purdue team here. No. Offensively, neither was the team that ran us off the field the last time we were in West Lafayette. So they're putting up 390 yards a game, lighting up 380, so about even there. Uh, they are scoring 25 points a game, lighting up about 28 points a game. So they they keep games close here, but I think the, the key difference here is you got to look at who they played here. Lost to Fresno State, who Fresno State's actually good, good this year. Uh, they beat what, Virginia Tech and Illinois, but lost to Syracuse, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Uh, all, all of those, uh, actually their losses to Wisconsin was their biggest one where they lost by 21 points. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ironically... Uh, they're they're lost to Iowa twenty to fourteen because it's Iowa. Um, it felt a lot worse than that. I'll, I'll just say that it felt a lot worse. Uh, yeah, because it, it, it didn't ever really seem like they were in that game for what it's worth, even though they only lost by six. Um, but yeah, yeah let's, was... let's talk a bit. Let's talk a bit about the team. Let's talk a bit about the players. Hudson card quarterback Hudson card. So if you're thinking to yourself, Hudson card, Hudson card, where have I heard that name before in the quarterback carousel that is modern college football? Uh, he used to be the starting quarterback for the Houston, not Houston. Why, why the hell did I say Houston uh, for the Texas Longhorns? Um, and for a bit of Buckeye lore, uh, he was the, <laughs> he was mid, he, he, he was very mid. Yes. Uh, he was the high school quarterback for one, Mr. Garrett Wilson. 
So, uh, maybe, maybe that helped in him getting a scholarship to Texas. Um, yeah, uh, I think he was actually his first year. I don't think he played, but I think his first year was actually in 2019. Uh, didn't, like I said, didn't play probably redshirted. I mean, it definitely didn't hurt. Yeah, it, it didn't. Having Garrett Wilson to throw to, uh, definitely helps. Um, Kyle, Kyle, I need a grade on this one. Uh, their primary running back is Devin Mockaby. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Ooh, he nailed it. I gotta nail it. It's not like we. It's not like we practiced that beforehand. Uh, you practiced it. I heard. I, I listened, but I did listen to you practice it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, we do try sometimes, guys. Um, also, uh, receiving a decent number of carries is Tyrone Tracy Jr. Uh, but Mockaby uh, tends to be the the primary guy. Uh, wide receive wide receiver Dion Burke is their primary wide receiver. Uh, 24 catches, nearly 400 yards, and four touchdowns on the season. Dion Burke versus Denzel Burke writes itself. Um, aside from that, they tend to spread spread the ball around a lot. I think I, I didn't write this stat down, but they have like a bunch of receivers. I want to say he's meant 10 receivers, 10 different players with 20 plus receptions. Something crazy like that. Kyle, can you confirm that for me? Um, Maybe not quite that many. Yeah, yeah, it probably wasn't 20. Like I said, I forgot to write it down. I downloaded so far, so Peacock looking... and part of me just died. It's okay, Woody. You'll survive. Do they do they have a free trial? Is there like a seven day or maybe a 14 day free trial? Just make sure you cancel it. Remember to cancel it. Leave, leave a thing in your calendar uh, to be sure to cancel it. Here's their top receiving receivers here. So they have four. Yeah, they have four that has 22 or more. So 22, 24, 24, 25 catches. What was the stat? Now, now that's going to bug me. Whatever. I move forward. Um, maybe but, it was yeah, 10 or you're, more. You're, you're, how many, you're how many wide receivers about, have no? 10 or more? No, no, that's. Am I, am um, I just crazy? Did I make it up? You, you must have. Okay. So. So yeah, you you talked about Dion Burke. Yeah, he's he's their playmaker. He he has four of the Purdue six touchdowns in the air for the year so far. Uh, definitely definitely going to be their go to person most likely most likely in the red zone there. But they do they do tend to throw to their tight ends just like what Purdue does, just like what Iowa does <laughs> historically too. So it's a big time uh, West thing. Uh, Max Clare, I believe, is a undergrad. I have to, I have to, I have to remember the difference between the two here. Um, yeah, Max Clare, redshirt freshman, uh, twenty-two catches, hundred ninety-six already, and the senior Garrett Miller has uh, hundred ten yards for the season and one of those six touchdown catches. But on, but on defense though, Jared, I think I think the big surprise here on defense is their true freshman uh, safety here, who leads the team in tackles. Yes, safety that leads the team in tackles and in interceptions. Um. Yeah. Here's the thing. One, it's it's not typically not typically a good sign. Uh, when your safety is leading the team in tackles, that's not that's not typically a great sign. Uh, those are tackles that your defensive lineman or your linebacker should probably be getting. Uh, if your safety is getting those tackles, that means that it's happening several yards down the field. That being said, Dylan Theanemann, uh is a true freshman. With those stats, again, 53 tackles, three interceptions. Um especially if he's also leading in picks. I mean, you just got to give him his due on leading it with, with picks. Um, yeah, th th this appears to be uh, an amazing scout job by the coaches at Purdue um, snagging this dude out of Indiana. Uh, again, freshman, true freshman 
out of high school, uh, absolutely killing it at Purdue right now. Um, yeah, uh, also on the team, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Hydron Jenkins, uh, he is uh, their sack leader, uh, four, four sacks, five tackles for a loss, 26 tackles. Purdue runs a 3-4. So that's something to keep an eye on. You don't see a, a lot of three, four in, in college football. Um, so he's a linebacker. He's an outside linebacker, but he's also kind of a, just a wide, you know, kind of a, a seven gap defensive end in the way that outside linebackers in a three, four are sometimes kind of a stand up defensive end. Uh, depending upon seven gap wide, seven wide, nine, Tech seven. It's been a minute. I was an offensive player. Anyway. Um, yeah, the. Yeah. It, how good your run defense is as as a three, four defense is very often dependent upon the performance at nose tackle. Uh, we'll see how that performs uh, for uh, Purdue. And the struggling Ohio State uh, run offense. Uh, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I've thought about it, and I officially have decided that I want Ohio State to be an air raid offense. I'm, I'm tired of watching the run game struggle, and I'm tired of watching. Uh, I'm tired of watching the offense and. Uh, Kyle McCord getting stuck in in three and longs constantly uh, being stuck into obvious passing downs constantly. That being said. We don't got to show that to Penn State. So. In my own personal headcanon, we're going to see Ryan Day once again. Stubbornly stick to trying to establish a run game. Uh, and then maybe next week against against Penn State, we'll 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 bring out the brand new air raid offense. That's that's my thought process. As much as it sucks Whatever's for Ohio State fans to throw screens, throw screens. Eh, maybe. Honestly, at this point, find something that works. <laughs> yeah, it, but here's here's the thing. When your offensive line sucks at run blocking is decent enough at pass blocking and you have all those wide receivers and a five-star quarterback. Just air it out. Just air Maybe it out. Just throw the ball. Just let's throw to run. Pass, Exa exactly. Exactly. Sun card. To run. And then yep. once you, once you've spread them out and put the fear of God into them with your passing game, well then those, you know, then you can just hand it off to Henderson every once in a while. And while they everyone else is going into retreat mode, trying to cover all these damn wide receivers, Henderson can just run wherever the hell he wants. Yep, just hand it off to Chip Chop and, and Chisel there. Yeah. Or yeah, whoever. Whoever. whoever any of the three or five running backs. Who are, whoever. Yeah, whoever. <laughs> now we're, we're redshirting hate. So uh, any, of okay, four four. any of the so, four running backs. So so then, so then, uh, so then a uh, Supcat favorite here uh, should be getting the ball then. Right? 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 Right, Jared? Right? Am I don't, right? Don't, no? don't, don't do that okay. to Austin. All right. That always worked great for Oregon and BCS games. Hey, Oregon's 500 in BCS games. Or, well, in playoff games. I, I, don't, I don't recognize the BCS as a thing that actually happened. I've, I've erased it from my memory, except except for one game i still claim more all right game. looking at the stats here what are what are some interesting stats to look out for in this game here i see i see here that uh third third down conversions produce pretty good they yeah. are 20 set they're 27th in the in the country here about 45 and a half percent of the time honest to god kyle the nicest stat i could find about their offense yes <laughs> Points per game, 73 yards per game, 63 points per play, 80 like yards per play, 83. Uh, 
I, I I'm trying to find something nice to say about their offense and I'm, I'm not finding it straight up, not finding it. Um, and looking at their defense, I think, I think their defense is okay. I, think, I, I mean, think their defense, if by okay, okay, 73rd in the country, 62nd in the country, 72nd in the country, 53rd in the country, 99th in the country, 61st in the country, 85th in the country. I like, I, I could tell you what all those individual things are, but you, you're not seeing them in a top 50 position in literally any category. They're 15th in, oppo- in oppo- opposing completion percentage. Great. Okay. That, that's, that's the nicest thing we can say about is, is that sometimes the quarterbacks have a bad completion percentage against this defense. Fair but, enough. Like realistically. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're holding opposing quarterbacks to under 55% completion percentage. But the opposing quarterbacks are also gaining seven or more yards per attempt. Which, if you don't know how to scale that, it's not good. It's not terrible, but it's also not good. No, nah, it's not. All right, let's get into our predictions here, Jared. Get into the uh, predictions already? Yeah, we, we we still got a lot to talk about here. Got a lot to talk about, and we have Austin's over unders as well here. So let's let's get into some predictions here. For this game, Ohio State versus Purdue, noon game on the Peacock. Yeah, yes, Sun Card. It was too soon. No, Kyle, don't read it. Don't read it. <laughs> Ohio State player to watch. What I is think- the Ohio State player to watch for you, Jared? Kyle McCord. It's time to air this bitch out. Uh, I don't. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's not save, 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 save the air raid for, for Penn state. Now, does that mean that I don't want to see it? Cause I still want to see it. The smart thing to do would be to like break out the brand new secret air raid offense against, against Penn state and to keep that under the wraps for now. But I, I still want to see it. Yeah, I th- I think in in this game here, I'm 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 going to cheat as well. I'm going to go with Marvin Harrison Jr. here. You're without Emeka. I was cheating. Most like most most likely without Emeka in this game. I'm just going to assume he's not here, just based on reading the I, tea I, leaves from I, 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 from I, Coach Day here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go with um, Marvin. I'm going to go with Marvin for my my pick here. Sun card set. Uh, Sun card in the chat uh, says, let Fleming eat. It's not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he hasn't really eaten much this year. No. All right, who's our guest picker this week, Jared? Guest picker is Dinger. What's up, Dinger? Uh, Dinger says, Ohio State running back. Will Henderson play? Uh, yes, he will. Uh, he he sent this before Ryan Day announced. Uh, so, but yes, yes, he will. Will the line do anything? That's debatable. Uh, <laughs> will Chip hit the holes? Will there be holes to hit? <laughs> will Mayan get his mojo back after trucking a Maryland defender? Hey, Mayan just needs an opportunity to get on the field. Um, yep. With last week's performance, this is the spot I will be watching. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you you gave a uh, a position and not a particular player, but sure. Well, I think I think he was saying Henderson, but if Henderson doesn't play Chip, got it. That's how okay. I interpret that. Enemy player to watch here, Jared. I'm getting with a uh, true freshman sensation out of West Lafayette, Dylan Thieneman. Uh I don't think the Purdue offense is going to be able to achieve much against Ohio State. 
I think Ohio State has uh, made two very good quarterbacks look very average the past two weeks or the past two games anyway. Um, and Hudson Card uh, is 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 not is, is he's not a decent quarterback. No, no, he, he, he definitely, he definitely isn't here, but what, what's, what's the one position that, that seems like always has a, a pretty good, um, knack at, um, getting at Ohio state here when it comes to Purdue. Um, I'll go with the wide receiver here. We we yeah. saw we saw we saw the previous wide receiver uh, Randall Moore. Yeah. Uh just bully his way. Yeah. Through Ohio State. I mean, I mean DJ Knox had had a had himself a good game as well uh, back in 2018, but I'm going I'm going to go with the I'm going to go with the wide receiver here Dion Burke for my enemy player to watch. If you're going to pick Dion Burke for the enemy player to watch, then you really should have picked Denzel Burke for the Ohio State player to watch. I, I feel like that would have been. Yeah, it would have been. That would have been very poetic been. of you if you if you had done that. But that is where my key matchup is going to be. It is Burke on Burke. Actually, no. <laughs> no, do it. You got to do it. It is. Yes, it's Burke on Burke. You got to do it. It's Burke on Burke is you my key to. matchup. I buried the lead. No, nah, I don't don't act like he he thought he just he just pivoted to that right now. Okay. He, what's your what's your key matchup, pivoted, Jared? I promise. What is your key matchup? I trust Kyle wouldn't do that. You you trust wrong. Um key matchup to me uh will be uh Ohio State's running yeah. Can I I need to just I need to stop saying Ohio State's offensive line versus the other team's defensive line. That is the key matchup that will be the key matchup for the rest of the year. I need to stop saying it. I keep saying it. I keep saying it over and over but again. You're gonna it's, say bad, it again. it's bad podcasting form to keep doing it. But you're going to keep doing it. But it's true. It's 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 the glaring weakness of this team. Ohio State's offensive line versus the front seven of Purdue. See, I, I, I switched it up a little bit. Uh, uh, going back here. So um, enemy player to watch for my guest picker. He also picked Dylan. Right star on the dim on a dim defense. Freshman safety is their lead, leading tackler and should be fun to watch chasing down Ohio State receivers. And he has for the key matchup. It is Ohio State versus Ross Aid Stadium. The best That's news. Cheap. Best news. Yeah. Best news was Fox <laughs> announcing a noon kick as the darkest of magics won't be available in daylight. A lot gets made of the record since 2000. But unlike this Saturday, all those losses were played at least partially in the dark. So, yes, noon, noon Eastern, 11, 11 central there. So is it central that time? I'm not sure, but either no. way, there, there'll still be plenty of light by the time the uh, clock hit zero. Uh, with the with the only Gary is is in the central time zone for Indiana. The rest of it's the rest of it's in the eastern time zone. OK. All right. The spread here, Jared, I didn't even look at what the spread is. How bad of me. All right. It closed as um. As CBS Pickham closed it, 19 and a half. Spread is Ohio State by 19 and a half points. Who do you got, Jared? You know, I'm not 100% sure where to go with this. Um, which is funny to say because the, the this my, my final score prediction is absolutely going to have Ohio State covering. Uh, so yes, I pick Ohio State to cover because 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 the, the the number has to add up to a certain number because I'm committed to the bit. 
So the the, the final score prediction is going to be ridiculous. But the the point I I think Ryan Day once again is going to absolutely try his damnedest to establish a running game. And that's going to eat a lot of clock and that's going to uh, inhibit the offense. And that's going to really put covering at, uh, at a premium uh, or it's, it's going to make covering really hard. Um, so I'm going to pick Ohio state to win obviously. And I'm going to pick Ohio state to cover, but should you pick Ohio state to cover? If you're putting actual money on the line, you probably shouldn't. Final score prediction. Ohio State 49. Nah, I can't give Purdue 20. Uh just, just put 49 to 20. Ohio State, they'll both score less than that. Like it's if I were being honest, it's probably more like 38 to 10. But I'm committed to the bit. So Ever since, ever since the, yeah, ever since the Notre Dame game, I have always gone against Ohio State covering the spread. I believe so. The last two games. It's a very dramatic way of saying the last two games. Well, I also, I also did against. Um, sure. Uh, <laughs> no, those, those are, that's it. Those are the last two games. Unless you picked Ohio State to not cover against the bye week. Yeah. Uh, that's true. <laughs> um, and I've been very skeptical of Ohio State to cover. And, you know, they, they covered last week, barely. But, but I, I, th I, think, I, think, they've, uh, I think they'll finally get it uh, turned around here against a Purdue team that just is going to lack the firepower to be able to put up enough points for, Ohio, for, uh, for them to stay in it with Ohio State. I just... I just don't think there's enough play players on this offense that uh, Purdue can go ahead and just keep up. I just I just don't see it here. So I got my final score of Ohio State forty two, the Boilermakers thirteen. That's I'm sure more accurate than my prediction. Which yes, Sun Card is a cover. So, um, our guest picker, Jared Dinger Dinger says here, preparation for this week started with the play calling in the first half of the Maryland game by forcing the team to deal with constantly being in a terrible spot. It won't be a shock for them when things go screwy in West Lafayette. The online should or look dimension should look chess and should look improved in quotes getting a chance to go against a poor de Purdue defense while the bullets who have held each of their last, each of their five opponents to their lowest scoring totals of the year. Good stat. Should be fine. Yes, that is. Should be fine holding Purdue to less than 14. Expect a sluggish first half and a strong second with Ohio State pulling away for a score that looks better than it feels. That's I, it's, it's, I, co-sign all of that that's that's a very accurate prediction for the game i'm gonna so i'm gonna get i'm gonna get stinger picked ohio state then <laughs> this is how is how i'm reading that i said did did he not actually say it did i m maybe not copy all of it oh. hold on um game prediction yada yada for oh yeah i did miss he says uh 59 to 10 ohio state uh because 59 to 10 which is which number. is which is a nice which is a nice prediction because dinger is also committed to the bit that is a nice number all right austin you're you are up here i see you in the chat here it is time for austin's over unders hi <laughs> all right so we will start with Mayan carries. Mayan carries he has here. 
at seven and a half as the over under. How many carries does Mayan have on the season at this point? Oh boy. Let me let me look real quick as I am slowly clicking through here. Mayan Williams has 25 carries. More than I was anticipating. 96 yards. More than I was anticipating, if I'm being honest. I'm going to go under. Uh, Henderson's back. Uh, Travion appears to be running back number two. That that leaves Mayan at running back number three. I'm going to go under. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go under as well. If that number is seven and a half, and he has not even hit that, even with Mayan being, or excuse me, that is Mayan, without, even with Henderson being out uh, last weekend, yeah, not not going to hit that. Austin says, to be fair, uh, I didn't know Henderson was back when I made that number. Fair. Easy pick. Easy pick. <laughs> All right. Um, next one here is Hudson card touchdowns at one and a half. Well, if I'm going to go with, if I'm going to go with my prediction, I'm going to go under. Yeah. And my, my, my prediction of 20 was again for the bit. Uh, So I'll also go under. Okay. All right. Um, Tate slash Ballard catches. At four and a half. So with Emeka Buka out, that mm-hmm. makes this plausible. Whereas, you know, I I don't think they have a combined four and a half catches on the year yet. Um, but um, they do they do combined for the year, but that's because Tate has five. Okay. And Ballard doesn't have any. All right. Um, you know, you didn't really have to you didn't really have to call out Ballard like that, Kyle. Um <laughs> the with the Mecca out. I'm I'm still gonna say under, but it's it's a good number, Austin. It is a good number. I just, I just tend to think that a lot of the extra, a, lo- a lot of the Emeka targets are going to go, I would say mostly to Fleming and Xavier. All right. Well, now state turnovers, forced turnovers at two and a half. Forced turnovers. Ohio state forced turnovers. Surprisingly, like Ohio State's done pretty good this year in forcing turnovers here. Uh, didn't it, didn't it talk much about Purdue and how much how many turnovers they have? They are for the minus. Years? They are minus half of a turnover uh, turnover margin per game. They're minus a half uh, giveaways per game. They're one point seven. So, but as you said, Ohio State is forcing more turnovers. Three feels like a lot to bet on, especially since I don't know how many. If if the Ohio State defense is doing its job, I don't think Purdue is going to have a whole lot of snaps in order to have opportunities to turn over the ball. uh, Ideally. Yeah, I I think two. I think two is a good number. I, I think the number is two. Yeah. So in this case, I'll go under. But I, I, I do like that. I, th- I think two is that magic number. Yeah. 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 I think that I think I'm, if I were to for if I were to make a prediction, the prediction would be two. So. Mm-hmm. Theonaman tackles at six and a half. Over. Over. I agree with that. Over. I I think there's a damn good chance he gets 10 or 12. And especially if Ohio State goes pass happy. I don't think it matters. Uh, True. Yeah, I I don't think it matters. I I think he I think he no matter what Ohio State does, I think he probably gets anywhere between eight to 12. (laughs) 
Ohio State rushing yards as a team, 118 and a half. Under. So as a whole, where, uh, where is this at here? They are averaging. I might go Purdue's, over. Purdue is averaging 153.8 yards per game on the ground. I think I think Ohio State will get it done as here. As allowed? They've allowed 153.8 yards per game. Okay. So I I think Ohio State will get it done here. I think they'll be able to have more success on the ground here. So I'm going to go over with this one. I, I, yeah, I just I, gotta believe. I just gotta believe they gotta go. Well, here's over. the thing, especially with Henderson back, he breaks like one. He breaks like one fifty sixty yarder, and you know you're you're maybe halfway there. So yeah, I'll, I'll go over. Okay. But we stink. They also stink. And Henderson's like I said, Henderson's good enough that like I envision a I envision a carry for Henderson in which he starts to go like off guard. Purdue over commits. He takes a jump cut to the outside. There's no one there. There's a giant clusterfuck of people just all jammed into the, you know, in around the guard. He bounces it outside and takes it for like 67 yards and a touchdown. And that's, that's half of that number. And the last one here from Austin. Ohio State touchdowns scored by players with numbers over 18. <laughs> okay. We're getting, we're so getting that goofy means, with it. So that means, obviously, no Marv, no Stover, uh, no Buka if he were to play, no Fleming, no Tate, no X. But we at, with the number set at 18, he's just asking about running backs. No Stover. He's just asking running backs. What about Scott? OK, G Scott. Uh, defense, a lot of defensive players, but not all the defensive players. Like we don't get Denzel Burke, but we do get Iggy. We do get Proctor. <laughs> You know, you know, I'm going to go. Oh, over that's here. right. Iggy changed his number to one. Why was I still thinking he was yeah. 20? I'm going to get 20 go over here. Spring. I don't know why my mind hasn't updated that yet. Yeah, I'll go over. I, I think if he if he had set if he had set the number and by the number, I mean the jersey number, not the one and a half number. If he had set it at. 19 over 19 and take and train them off the board. I think I just said under, but with the number set at 18 and I get train them, I'm going to go over. Yes. Good. Good call. Good. call, oh, Jared. Right, it's, it's, that it's, is it's the train them bonus. It's the train them bonus. It's it's everything yeah. I need. If, if there was that, fantasy college football, people would hate train him for being a touchdown vulture. No, that was a good that one, is all, Austin. That was a good yeah, one. Yeah, that was all of Austin's over-unders here. We got anything else, Jared? Anything else you want to mention or discuss before we wrap things up here? No. I mean, I do want to I do want to mention uh, that we will be having a social screen this Saturday uh, at noon. In the Discord server. I don't know what game we might be watching. Uh, but we are having a social screen in the. Was that subtle? We are having a social screen uh, in the Discord server at noon on Saturday. Um, we'll vote. No, we didn't vote this week. I. I want the executive decision on it for, um, I don't know. I just had a stream of conscious uh, thought that maybe uh, people might have a hard time seeing their favorite team play uh, for, you know, reasons. 
Now, I don't know who's everyone's favorite team is. I'm going to stop talking before I get myself in trouble. Um, Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Everyone, including non-paid member of the Discord, uh, non-members of the Discord server, uh, can uh, watch the social screen along with everyone. The paid members have voice privileges during the social screen where they can talk back to us, call me dumb, uh, tell Kyle how much they love him, and but but then call me stupid. Uh, it's the opportunity for our, our Discord people to uh, talk back to us, if nothing else. Uh, but th but that is a that is a premium feature, the ability to talk during the social screen. But everyone can watch the social screen. Uh, Kyle, that's that's that, those are the plugs. Uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? How about a boom? You want, you want a boom, Jared? I do want a boom. How about, how about a Javen Boggs from Cocoa, Florida? Uh, the latest uh, recruit to commit to Ohio State. He's a 2025 kid, which that that name sounds familiar jared doesn't it? oh yeah i wonder if i wonder if two weeks ago <laughs> i i put him in our mock class for 2025 huh yeah don't maybe, don't, don't let the don't maybe let the sometimes numbers, maybe sometimes i know the, what i'm talking about yeah don't let the numbers fool you you look at it yeah. right now october 10th 11th whenever 12th whenever you're listening to this here Shown as a three-star wide receiver, that, that that that's going to go up here. Yeah. There's a re there's a reason. Very there's a reason Chris Olave. Brian this is a very there, Chris there, Olave there, situation. Yeah. Yes. There's a reason Brian Hartline went after him. This is the first wide receiver in the 2025 class. This isn't just like, eh, let's fill a spot. No, nah, they wanted him. So yep. you can look at the you can look at the recruiting rankings and be like, oh, is oh. he actually any good? Yeah. He's, so our, he's, so Austin, Austin's going to have a chance to see him play in a few weeks. Yep. Yep. Awesome. All right. Nope. That's it. That is all I got here, Jared. Why don't you um, um, head us out here? All right. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by the floor walkers. That's right. The floor walkers. Uh, they will be ending today's show. And with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the Floor Walkers.